Here's a look at some of the times when people caught on TCAP got exactly what they deserved. Let's kick things off with a 53-year-old who calls himself Hambubger. And you know what? This dude might be the sickest prick I've ever seen on the show, bar none. See, James Wayne Wiles started a conversation with our setup, and we all know how disturbing a move that is already. But to make things worse, the dude could have easily been older than her grandpa. But as luck would have it, apparently his chat log was destroyed in the infamous hardware crash the Watchdog organization faced. However, a few years later, some of it resurfaced on the internet. And thank God for the leak, because who knows what would have happened if this prick had got acquitted. You see, Wiles didn't waste any time before he got down to business. He's in love and he quickly hopes the love affair will go to the next level. By the way, this was a complete contrast to how he started the conversation. At first, Wiles put up an act like he was some kind of saint, and he really leaned into the religious theme. Since the dude claimed he was a guardian angel to gain the setup's trust and to get his foot in the door, but the act didn't last long. He quickly switched gears and went from angel to devil in the blink of an eye. He soon made it clear he was open to the idea of getting comfortable. <laughs> He then went into great detail of how he would put his disgusting fantasies into practice. And if that wasn't horrible enough, what he said next was shocking. He goes on to say he wants to perform or and she replies, it's okay. As long as you're gentle. Oh wait, because things are about to get creepier. The dude was single-mindedly focused on one thing, which should be painfully obvious by now. But he wanted to see her in pink first, and you might not believe this, but this dude was like totally head over heels for her. He was so crazy about her that he was ready to put a ring on her finger just to make sure she didn't go to school. This guy was really trying to make a claim on her. But that was just the beginning. When the setup met him at the door, she innocently asked him if he brought her a gift, a pack of M&Ms to be precise. And you should see how he pointed to his pocket. <sighs> at this point, I can't help but wonder what else he had in there. Meanwhile, the setup took her leave to get changed into what he wanted to see her in. The pink stuff, remember? And Wiles got so excited that he couldn't help but indulge himself. We've blurred his graphic body language, which seems to telegraph exactly what's on his mind. <sighs> well, he expected the chick would walk out in her flashy and fancy outfit. The dude had to jerk his hands out when he saw Chris making his grand entrance. A little nervous driving around out there. Yeah. What are you doing here? Just like you guessed, Wiles tried to play it cool. He claimed he'd only come over to hang out. But when he realized Chris wasn't buying his shit, he insisted that he didn't have any naughty plans up his sleeve, or rather his pants. But that's not exactly what we saw a few minutes earlier, was it? Anyway, Chris shut down Wiles' story real quick. He whipped out the chat log, which was loaded with some crazy explicit stuff beyond even what I've mentioned so far, easily disproving Wiles' claim. Yeah, there was no way out from here, and his cover story fell apart in a matter of seconds. Wiles was quickly apprehended by the cops, and there was no denying that he was a real piece of work. But when it comes to making plans, I'm pretty sure the next guy on the list has Wiles beat. By the way, he is also one of the oldest men to have ever walked into the sting house. Yeah, you thought Wiles was old? And speaking of Wiles, while he took his time to get to the heart of the matter, Michael Gentile was incredibly forward right from the start. <laughs> He's particularly known for his unsettling voice, one that could easily send chills down your spine. I want to make you so happy, my little angel. I love you, baby, so much. What's more, this guy also told the setup that he enjoyed showing off his body. And to make things worse, he even encouraged her to do the same. And this weirdo actually invited her to join groups that, well, believed in doing the same thing. Yep, that's the kind of brazenness we're dealing with here. 
So safe to say, when it comes to Gentile, there's no question of modesty. To prove his point, he also shared multiple pictures of himself in a forest, in his house. <laughs> oh boy, you're not prepared to hear his next location. He shared pictures of himself on the toilet. Yeah, I don't even know what to say here. The hideous conversation about these sorts of ideas went on for over a month. A month! During this time, Michael took the opportunity to groom the setup to his liking. He went over every single move and position he wanted to try with her and even asked her to play with a banana so she could be prepared for him. And if you thought that was disgusting, then wait till you hear what the cops had to tell about his elaborate plan. And you'll be shocked when you hear what cops say Gentile was planning. A kitty manufacturing site. Yeah, remember at the top of the video when I said these guys were on a, another level of nastiness, I wasn't kidding. And we're only at number two right now. Now, for someone who was so unhinged while dishing out his plans and desires, when Michael showed up at the house, he seemed pretty nervous. Just as he entered the house, something about the whole situation didn't seem right. He first got rid of a troublesome window that could expose him, but just then he was hit with a wave of realization. And without missing a beat, he did what any guilty person would do. I'm, I'm gonna go grab hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Yeah? Come here, man, please. Yes, he slammed the door shut and started speed walking away from the place, not looking back once. But he had no idea that his little escape plan would soon be cut short. Gentile to have a seat, but outside a dozen cops are waiting for him. Talk about an unexpected twist to his little escapade. But the Gentile story doesn't end here. When the cops searched his car, they found a key to a nearby hotel room on him. Now, why would Michael need to rent a hotel room? Well, the cops wanted to find out. And when they reached the place, what they found inside was bone chilling. Digital camera. Remember, he told the decoy he wanted to take pictures of her. Yes. Michael had hid away a knife and a camera at the hotel. It's scary to even think of what could have happened if he hadn't been caught by the TCAP crew. If that wasn't pathetic enough, what they discovered next was even crazier. Found 24 explicit images of minors on his cell phone. Turns out the dude was getting divorced. During the interrogation, he claimed that he had only come to meet someone he thought was 30 years old, which is so, so far from the truth. He also reportedly threw in the role-playing chat room excuse as a way of justifying his action. But sorry, man, nobody's buying that. You see, there's no doubt that Michael wanted to get busy at the hotel room and maybe even bring things to an end right after. But this next guy decided to bring the party to the sting house and no it wasn't any old party it was absolutely crazy well i gotta say just the look of this guy disgusts me at the time of the sting marvin harrison smith was a 35 year old clergyman and restaurant manager over the course of 12 days Marvin, who pretended to be Marcus, went from engaging in inappropriate talk to severe psychological abuse. He first started off by asking her about her boyfriend and how much they were involved with each other. But in time, his questions changed direction and started targeting her, well, purity. And every time he asked her something, it was worse than what he asked before. B, $250. When she asks, why do you want to give me money? He says, cause I want you. Dude was so desperate that he actually offered her $250 in exchange for, well, you know. Sometime later, he also admitted to dating someone really young in the past, but nobody expected that he'd asked her if she'd ever seen a black man's joystick. This guy was so sick in the head that he even warned her not to inform her parents because he feared that they would report him to the police. And remember, 
Remember, this guy loved to hurt the people he got close to. So it's even more chilling to think of. And Marvin even took pride in this sort of stuff. He loved to talk about it. This explains why he confessed about going all the way with two other women that he, well, shouldn't have. Yeah, this man was truly horrified. What's more, he even claimed that his girlfriend named Phyllis was on her way to the Sting House to join the setup in the night's events. But in truth, she was nowhere near the house. Doesn't show up. She apparently had to work. But Southwest Georgia male, yes, does. I don't even think she existed. In the end, the only person that showed up at the house was him. And well, as you can see, he had nothing to hide. But as the decoy walks behind the curtain, the man sees our camera crew and run. But as soon as the cameras popped out, Marvin made a run for it. But as you know, the cops were just waiting for him to make his next move. An officer's teaser knocks him to the ground. Oh boy, Marvin was full of sickening surprises. But you know what? This next guy is still somehow even worse. Stephen Mark Benoff was a married special education teacher at Woodridge Elementary School prior to him showing up at the Sting House. So we're already off to a really, really bad start. The 54-year-old dude believed that he was talking to a young man of inappropriate age, but he had no idea who was behind those words. During the conversation, when Stephen got wind of the fact that the setup had a grown-up partner, he wasted no time in asking more about the boyfriend. Yeah, he wanted to know everything about how they did, where they did, and more precisely about what they did. Steven then went on to describe all the things he wanted to do with the setup and even went to the extent of telling them that he'd buy him a bunch of women's clothes. However, when confronted by Chris at the Sting House, Prick had the audacity to lie to his face. What age did Brandon tell you he was? 20, 23, I believe. You want to try again? No, but he said he was 23. What's the problem? More than lying, it's almost like he was trying to change the setup's age as a way of convincing himself that he wasn't doing anything wrong. But there was something more interesting Stephen wanted to know. Chris, however, brushed off that question and showed Stephen the chat log where the so-called teen had clearly stated their age. But Stephen still tried to weasel his way out. He was 13. Mm -hmm. No, no. You could see the smugness in his demeanor as he argued that the setup hadn't explicitly mentioned the right age. Despite the pressure, Stephen didn't give in. He pretended to be innocent, and when asked if he carried protection, just like any other moron who shows up at the Sting House, he tried to justify that by saying he always carried the round. Damn, how hard is it really to take some accountability? But when it comes to being a sicko, he's not the only guy acing the game. Meet Kevin Westerbeck. And when I tell you he's had a history of repulsive behavior, you better believe me. Dude had also been caught for this very behavior on multiple occasions. And here he was once again falling into the same old habits and chatting with our setup. But guess what? Kevin lied about his true age, pretending to be 27 years old. He also mentioned he was looking for something very casual and within four minutes of conversing, he was all in. So it was no surprise when he made comments that were way out of line in person. Huh? I gotta finish getting changed, Kev. Well, I'll watch it. But the day of the meeting, the setup asked him to wait at the bar stool while she changed. But Kevin offered to watch her and followed right behind her voice. <laughs> <laughs> this dude was really creepy. Thankfully, Chris intervened just in time and asked him about his intentions. And, well, Kevin did what any liar usually does. What are you up to tonight? Oh my, she asked me to come over and... He even insisted that the setup initiated the conversation and he was just there to say hello. He maintained that he hadn't planned to come, but did so because the setup invited him. Slowly but surely, his whole story was starting to crumble once Chris pulled out the chat logs. Just talking. Just talking. It yeah. would be fun then, okay? You say, then I'm big. She says, really? Yeah, how? Then you give the dimension of your... And when Chris asked him why he came over, Kevin admitted it was foolish of him to show up. He also claimed that it was all chat crap and that he didn't intend to do anything at all. 
It's crazy that Kevin had a court hearing the following week for pulling off a similar act in the past, and yet he felt no remorse for what he had done. Well, thankfully, he was sent away to cool his heels behind bars. But the same cannot be said for the last weirdo on today's list. I'm talking about Todd Spikes. At a cool 41 years old, was way too comfortable with the setup. The dude wanted more from his little meetup. He not only wanted the setup, but also her mother to himself. He actually said that he was willing to move down and give both the women a good time. What was absolutely terrifying is that he used to be a police officer and had gone back into law enforcement. So what happened is Todd had promised to show up at the sting house at a specific time, but suddenly he became unresponsive. Consequently, the production crew and law enforcement called off the sting for the night. However, at 1 a.m., Todd contacted the setup clean. He was in route, but sadly for him, he never got to the sting house. Then a spike seems to drive away, the police stop his car and place him under arrest. What followed next was a complete search of his car, and you won't believe what the cops found inside. That firearm happened to be a snub-nosed revolver in his front pocket. Yeah, he had a whole arsenal stashed in his trunk. And that wasn't all. He also had everything he would need to hide a body. Throughout the entire debacle, it was clear that Todd didn't care about the consequences. Forget about caring. It didn't even look like he had any regrets. But this next guy, who was messed up on a whole different level, ended up in a bloody mess of his own. And I'm not suddenly British, I mean it quite literally. Don't recognize this guy? That's probably because this dude was part of Chris's new gig, Take Down with Chris Hansen, which took off long after the original show was canceled. But this time around, Chris was back with the same charisma. The sting itself, though, had taken a new form. Now, I'm more than glad that Chris decided to make a comeback because this Sam here was getting into some shady business. To understand Sam's mind, all you have to do is take a peek into the conversation he had with the setup, and you won't believe what he asked. Well, I can't help that, you're beautiful. You ever go swimming? I'd like to see you in a big LOL. You know, I should really be used to this stuff by now, but it somehow never fails to make my skin crawl. But it turns out, this moron had already paid his visit to the prison for doing the same damn thing sometime earlier. It's crazy how sometimes people just never learn, which is why Chris wasn't ready to let him loose. He decided to put him behind bars once and for all. Get on the ground! Give me your hey, hey, hey. I'm not dirty! Despite being cornered on all sides, this dude seemed to have other plans. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, he really thought he could make a run for it. But sadly for him, there was no coming out from the hole that he dug for himself. The more the cops tried to tighten the grip on him, the more this jerk tried to wiggle away from their grasp. But cops weren't having any of it. Kick off again! We're gonna have to next time! He tried everything he could to resist the arrest, but I hope he knows that he could land a penalty for doing just that. Either way, he had to finally give in, and Chris pounced on the opportunity to get some answers from him, and his response was epic. So what happened tonight? Huh? What was that supposed to mean? And it doesn't even really answer Chris's question. However, sometime later, the weirdo decided to spill the bee. You see, this dude was a known offender, and he was well aware that his next arrest wouldn't be easy on him. And just when you thought he'd come to his senses, he said something totally absurd. This is a lot. I mean, it happens a lot. You know, it happens more than what people people think. Yeah, this dude was way in over his head. I think being a repeat offender in itself should tell you a lot about him. But how about this next dude who worked for the freaking government? You see, this guy trying to strip? Yeah, that's Joseph Roisman for you. A Navy guy who didn't have the greatest attentions when he was in port and on leave. When it comes to determination and commitment, this jerk ticks all the box. First stopped on a bus, hits to ride on a cab, and then bam, he was sprinting his way to the driveway. If only he used all that energy for doing something good. It's crazy how he landed at the sting house the very next day after striking up a conversation with the setup and traveled for over five hours just to get to the party. Seems like this prick was on a mission the moment he stepped off his ship. Next man you'll meet needs little encouragement to take off his clothes ready to jump in the hot tub. But little did he know that he'd find himself in hot water. The moment Chris strolled in, the whole story took a twist. When Chris asked Joseph what he was doing there, he dropped a crazy one. I don't know. Talk. Be talk. Friends. Be friends. Yeah. As long as we're friends, that's fine. As long as I don't, you know, cross that line. Okay. 
Everyone knows you're not here to just be friends. Okay, buddy? So let's just cut the crap. Anyway, when Chris got into it with him, the dude had some confessions to make. Honest mistake? Honest mistake. Oh yeah, this honest mistake was about to cost him his whole life. Because his dirty and dark truth was finally out in the open, and well, the veterans in the comments were the first to pitch in their disappointment. Anyways, as much as I hate this dude, the next is next weirdo. I'm talking about Mike Manzi, and the conversation he was having with the setup was definitely not related to Matt. Did you blaze? You are my soulmate. Wow, you are so cute. You look way older, by the way. But he also admits he shouldn't be talking to a thin year old. I mean, this dude crossed all levels of student teacher relationship, and it was almost as if he knew what he was doing was definitely wrong. It's funny, when these dudes know what they're up to is wrong, and yet they show up at the house with the biggest smile on their face. And Mike's story played out exactly the same. Please. Sure. No, right here, sir. Oh, the dude was about to sprint. Now, come on. What's the hurry? Just sit your butt down for a bit, will ya? And that's when his entire story changed from coming over to Blaze to this. Make sure she was okay. Well, I came over just to make sure that everything was fine. Everything was okay. Absolute BS. That's what that is. And Chris didn't wait a second to call him out. But take a look at the attitude. Well, I mean, I don't know. I can, she could come, she could be here with a group of people for all I know. Yep. Buddy, tone down for a bit there, huh? The story of yours isn't gonna get you any. And you have to see his reaction when Chris told him about the show. I'm Chris Hansen. No, you're not. Is I? No, you're not. Yes, I am. Deluded. That's what he got. But when the cameras came out, things got real. Please let me go home, guys. I'm gonna get arrested going that way. Yeah, I Please. No, I can't. A lot of viewers were actually weirded out by him for warning the setup about crazy old men on the internet when he was exactly that. And another viewer even pointed out how he was checking the room to make sure she was alone. Like, that's completely okay. Okay, it's time to move on from education and onto something more serious. This time, this dude turned out to be a doc. Yep, you got that right. Maurice Wallen wasn't here to save the day. The dude strolled in like he can own the place. So, not bad of a drive? He even helped him himself with a drink, cool his burning desires for a bit of, you know. And helping himself to a drink. I can't, oh jeez. But you know what? A doctor with shaky hands is never a good sign. And well, all his fears turned into reality when he unexpectedly ran into something. He spots Dateline's camera crew. I gotta take off. What? Sir? Sir? Now, I've heard of doctors having a thing for fast cars, but this dude could definitely move. I'll tell you that much. Two seconds later, though, Maurice threw a full-blown tantrum. As if that wasn't enough, he started crying too. Oh man, I wasn't doing anything. Get his keys. I wasn't Get doing anything. Man. Yep, that's right. The dude was a hell of a crybaby. That's for sure. Well, this little appointment surely cost him more than his career. Just like what happened with his next dude, who simply couldn't shut the hell up. Yeah, like what? And he responds, hmm, like, you know, some positions and moves. You see, right from the start, Joswinder Chima's flirting game was seriously weak, and his excuses were even worse. He likes soft, sensual kissing. See, I like to make love. I'm sorry, what? Did he just say soft and sensual? Okay, that's totally not appropriate given the age of the setup. But turns out, this guy's actions spoke louder than his words. Hang on, you gotta be patient for that. Just a hug? Whoa, he sure had his mind set on going all the way. No doubt. And that little smirk on his face gave it all the way. So this guy here was in for more than just a hug. But when Chris walked in, the dude's entire personality took a 180 degree turn. No hug for me? Oh, Don't you no. have a seat right over there oh, for me? No. Oh, no, what? Come on, have a seat. Well, sorry ain't gonna cut it, pal. Chris was just chilling, waiting for that dude to drop a real dumb line and catch him in the act. And what do you know? The weirdo gave us what we wanted. His response was like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It would, dude, I, I was actually 
home at that time really right. drunk, I probably didn't even pay attention. I'm sorry, but how much did you have to drink to go blind? Was he drunk at the moment too? Because I don't see what there was to smile about when Chris was actually grilling his backside. He, he's 30. Am I on video? Right now? Yes, you're Can on. we turn that off, please? No, we can't. After everything he'd done, he had the nerve to make a request. Yeah, we are way past that, okay? There's no way you're getting what you want anymore. And get this, Jasswinder here had actually watched the show earlier. I watched your show on Dateline, I would never do that. Wow, the fact that he knew so much about the show was mind-boggling. Seems like an ardent follower, probably trying to understand the tricks in the game just so he doesn't get caught in the act. But look what happened. Turns out, Chris and the rest of the crew outsmarted him. And viewers simply couldn't believe how dumb these weirdos actually are. I mean, it's crazy how they're asked to show up at the Sting House at some real odd hours, and yet they fall for it all the same. Anyway, with Jazzwinder Chima out of the house, now it's time to get another guy through the door. And this time, we have a guy who is super cautious, taking risks only. Hey, how was your drive? Good. Can I do yeah, you can make it happen. It's fine. Mohammed Abdullah took every precaution possible to not get into trouble. But well, fate had other plans. Now, before I get into more details, let me give you a sneak peek into his chat history. Whether she slept with her old boyfriend, if she pays. Yeah, dude was totally off the charts. I mean, I don't see how it even matters to him, but he asked her if she was good at pleasing herself and if she'd like to give him a taste. Yikes. He sure had one hell of a wish list. But Chris was about to throw water on all of his sleazy plans. And what's the dude's reaction? He simply said, I'm just passing through. Yeah, so why walk yourself in then, huh? But I get it. I get it. He probably was too stunned to come up with a better excuse. And Chris had seen more weirdos than this dude could imagine, so it was not hard for the TC host to slam his lot. So you just happened to be going by and you saw this blonde woman out there, and she waved at you. <laughs> oh yeah, this is where the dude realized he messed up. I mean, just look at his face, y'all. But I was surprised when the excuses kept coming. Thinking she owns the house, I would try yeah. to tell her what is it, and just yeah. she say, come in. Oh, come on, dude. Try something better at least for once. Well, you should look at that, I think he heard me. Cause right after that dumb excuse, he put on his thinking cap and started crafting a whole new story. I, I don't know, I checked with, with a lot of people, I checked with a lot of people online. I gotta give props to this guy, seriously. Because when Chris started reading those chat logs, this dude had this, I have no idea what you're talking about, look on his face. And wow, I mean, this guy actually had a knack for lying. I was in the office at this time. I don't chat in the morning. You don't chat in the morning. And as if this clown act he was pulling wasn't enough, he then went ahead and said the most idiotic thing ever. You know, I'm an Egyptian, I'm Muslim, I don't do this stuff. I mean, what give? Dude really thought he did something there. But you know how this is gonna end up, don't you? Despite being careful that night, Abdullah found himself seated in a jail cell. And if being charged for a hit and run case wasn't already enough, the next guy decided to amp up his rap sheet. And well, he got exactly what he asked for. You see, Cody Green, aka C Greasy, had been flying under the radar for quite some time. No matter which way you look to him, Cody radiated trouble. And I'm not even talking about the number of times he was slapped with a DUI. This dude was so vile that Prince Hansen started talking about his interaction with Green before the actual confrontation was even aired. Before Cody Green even gets there, that he could be trouble. Turns out, this moron was suspected of having fled the scene of an accident, and to nobody's surprise, he was also found to be under the influence at the time. Yeah. He was one hell of a reckless guy. And this time, he wanted to use the Sting House at Forston, Georgia as his personal playground. So when Green showed up at the house, the cops who were keeping a close eye on him, they couldn't help themselves but crack a joke. And trust me, it was a good one. You see, Green was pretty loaded. He pulled up in an expensive, brand new Cadillac, and bro looked pumped to get some action. Maddie. But what he got instead was something he totally deserved. And you gotta hear his reaction. Please, sir, I really drove this far for no reason. 
<laughs> yeah, he sounds like a spoiled brat to me. But when Chris threw shade at everything he stood for, including what brought him to the sting house in the first place, dude just decided to pack it up and leave. But hey, where do you think you're going, dude? Look who's here to take you where you really belong. You see, Cody wasn't someone who would give in so easily. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. There you go, all the way. He put on this defiant face throughout the interrogation, and there was one thing he was willing to give. Gives the cameraman the finger. He's defiant until the end. But who cares? At least we got one less more on Rome in the street. And just like that, this next guy walked in right behind Cody in the same forced and sting. You see, the team had been chatting with this man for a while, and he finally decided that he was gonna show up. Hey! Okay. Take you all to get here. Yeah, well. Dennis Colson, who went by the screen name Scooby Doo at 101, had no idea what awaited him. Now this man couldn't keep his shit together. Just as the setup left the room, you wouldn't believe what he said. I like the roster sheets. Say what? So I like the roster sheets. I mean, who says that? Safe to say the guy was as vile as they come. The dude looked so comfortable being at the house, he even joked about how he would have come sooner if he had been able to get directions to the house. But his happiness was cut short when someone unexpectedly walked in. Did you have a hard time finding the place, or? Yeah, man. And what was Coulson's first manner of concern? Yeah, who are you? Yeah. Well, who are you? Yeah, he wanted Chris to identify himself, while he himself was a stranger in some random house. I mean, talk about throwing stones at a glass house, right? But wait till you hear his reason for showing up. Turns out, this freak was so bored in life that he wanted to hang out with young chicks. And well, he was only getting started. Unlike most other morons caught in the show, Coulson spilled his guts about most of his interaction with the setup. But that doesn't mean he admitted he was wrong. He insisted that he had no wrong intentions, although he brought some skins among a whole other laundry list of items with him. Coulson had said that he carried them for safety purposes, but Chris wasn't going to be fooled so easily. And well, he had a pretty fitting reply to give. For airbags in the car in case you get in a crash? Exactly. Well played, Chris. Well played. However, Coulson started to panic. He finally realized what he'd got himself into. In the end, Coulson was almost on his knees begging for forgiveness, but his fate was already sealed. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Put your hands behind your back! Put your hands behind your back! That wasn't a takedown, that's what I call a smackdown. Anyway, back at the station while being processed for his sentence, Coulson had some advice to give. Hey kids, don't f up. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Now, you wouldn't have been in this position had you followed your own damn advice, you prick. I think Coulson was one of the most remorseless guys to have ever been caught on the show. But when it comes to creepiness, this next weirdo puts them all to shame. Okay guys, brace yourself, for here comes John Dupee. Hey, who? Hey. That store. John Dupee was so desperate that he wanted to toy around with not one, but two setups. Yep, this 40-year-old was spoiled for choice. And his conversation on the phone will send shivers down your spine. So Dupee used fake names like John Santoro and Johnny Connecticut to contact his prey over the internet. And guess what he preferred to call his muse? Boo. Yeah, this dude was all about getting the feeling right. It's crazy to think that he actually had his sister drop him off at the house and I'm sure she had no idea of his dirty plan. What's more, this weirdo was prepared for a long night. He didn't walk in empty handed either. He had brought a large bottle of iced tea, chocolate, and a bag of chips as gifts for the setup. But when he sensed that this setup was nervous, he decided to put her at ease. Wondering how? Check this out, gee. A hug? I don't know. That must have freaked the hell out of the setup. I mean, just imagine being in her place. It's just crazy. Dude thought it was completely okay to scoop the setup into his arms without even getting her consent first. Well, I guess he never thought he needed any in the first place, which is why Chris took that sly move as his cue to make an entrance. But despite being in a tough spot, Dupee had no problem lying. Hang out, watch football? Hang out, watch football with whom? And although Chris laid out all the evidence right in front of him, Dupee wasn't showing any signs of backing down. I know, but you just came to hang out. No, I brought... What, get a hug? And watch football. Watch football. And the more Chris tried to grill him, the more Dupee tried to plead his innocence. Or, you know, a hello hug, that was it. With a 13-year-old girl. Walked right in the house. 
Dupee refused to admit that he was there with the wrong intentions and frantically tried to argue his way out of it. Okay, Dupee, it's time you quit trying because the way I see it, there's only one way out for you, and it's this. But this 23-year-old dude had an edge over Dupee. I mean, wow, is that even possible? Well, turns out Ryan McIntosh was a douchebag of the highest order. So this dude McIntosh ran a high-end dog boutique business and had strutted over to the Sting House at Fort Myers for, well, you know what. But today, it wasn't his lucky day. When the setup walked towards the back door, someone else decided to show up. Why don't you uh, make yourself at home here? Have a seat. What amazes me is that Macintosh actually smirked as if he had already seen this coming, despite being absolutely screwed. Macintosh was the first to sit down in an attempt to show him who was the boss. Chris then asked him for an explanation, and just like most of the other guys who landed in the house, this freak came up with some boring excuse of his own. Come and hang out. Hang out with him. Well, of course at first he denied having any disgusting intention, but things were about to start getting interesting, because what he said next will make your jaw drop. Call conversation. I'm sorry, I was just going over to hang out and I felt like I'd be more of a big brother more than anything. Say what did I just hear him say? Big brother? Man, if you were gonna lie anyway, could you have at least bothered coming up with something more convincing? But here's the thing, this dude had no idea that Chris had his hands on a really explicit chat log, in which he played a starring role. Ten minutes later, Macintosh still showed no signs of surrendering. He continued to string one lie after another and completely failed to admit his fault. I had no intention of having... The biggest twist came when Chris finally decided to reveal his identity and Macintosh decided to turn things around. Yeah, he already knew everything about the sting and had recognized Chris the moment he laid eyes on him, which explains why he wasn't one bit surprised when the cameras came out. He continued to be calm and composed as the crew tried their best to get a shot of him. After taking a moment, with an absolutely blank expression plastered on his face, Macintosh revealed that he had watched most most of the show and hinted at being a fan himself. When a surprise Chris asked him what he thought of it, he replied that it was good coverage and nothing more. Intrigued by his demeanor, Chris then asked him whether the show had left any kind of impact on him, to which he bluntly denied. This was a horrifying revelation. If shows like TCAP can't instill fear in the minds of Psycho like Macintosh, then how far gone were these guys? This prick was so well versed with the show that he knew exactly what to say and when. Despite Chris's several attempts to break him, Macintosh knew how to fight his case, and the one statement which he held onto into the very end was that he wasn't here for what everyone else thought he was there for. Sorry bro, but nobody's buying your BS. And since he's such a mega fan, I guess he already knew what happened next. Get down! Didn't resist in any way. Last but not least, the final sicko on this list was so cocky that he spoke to Chris without a hint of compassion. So, Michael Warracker found himself at the setup's house, and judging by his screen name, it was clear what sort of intentions he was there for. 29-year-old Michael Warracker, an unemployed computer technician, uses the frightening screen name, Can I during the chats, Warracker had asked the setup if she was down to indulge in some highly inappropriate activities. He had even tried to convince the setup that it would be a good experience and that she should try it before rejecting the idea. Once he made it to the house, the setup asked Warracker to have a seat, and she got the hell out of there. Who can blame her, really? But guess who walked in to take her place? We have a lot to talk about. After seeing Chris, Warracker calmly poured himself a drink, displaying no sort of reaction at all. A visibly amused Chris questioned Warracker's intentions at the house, and he replied that he was there to casually hang out. When asked about his username, you wouldn't believe what he said. Got a guy thing here, okay? Got a guy. Yeah. Uh, or like we all have our finishes. Warracker then told Chris that the chats and everything that happened up until that point had been too convenient to occur normally, and he claimed he knew it was coming. We all saw that pretty clearly, didn't we? And this guy must have just thought people were idiots. Warracker denied that he had intentions of doing anything other than hanging out, but little did he know that Chris had every single one of his chats. During the chat logs, Warracker had brought up some very graphic activities. Well, not really surprising considering it's him we're talking about. You say, I like 
This was really disturbing since such ideas are what push people to do reckless things. Warhacker tried to justify those chats by saying they were just his kinks and a bit casual, harmless roleplay. Things got truly disturbing when Warhacker went as far as saying this. You talk about uh, shitting her and maybe cutting her and tasting her blood. Warhacker then told Chris that what he usually looked for was someone who enjoyed pain as a form of pleasure. I mean, damn, this dude was twisted in his head. Warhacker went on to add that he even had previous girlfriends who enjoyed a little bit of pain here and there. I mean, think 50 shades of gray, you guys. Anyway, Chris then asked him whether he had previously found anybody to fulfill these horrifying desires of his. And Warhacker admitted that the opportunity had not presented itself until that moment. For someone with such strong opinions, can you even believe him? You see, true or not, Warhacker tried every possible way to sell his story, but that doesn't excuse him from anything that he said online. I mean, those chats were downright disturbing. Can you believe this prick actually asked the setup? And I quote, I want you to bend over and shove it up your a-hole. No, he didn't stop there. He then said, if it hurts you pretty bad, you wouldn't do anything, would you? But if you thought that was crazy, then wait till you hear his reaction to Chris reading the chat logs aloud. Well, people do some things, man. You know, come on. This scumbag is just terrifying. What's more, this dude had shown up with an intention to put an elaborate plan to work. And the list of items he had brought with him will send chills down your spine. From a scary movie to lube and a video camera to top it off, Warhacker had more than sex on his mind. Just completely despicable. Cut to the moment when the cameras come out, Warhacker added nothing more to his statement and swiftly left the house. Once outside, he pleaded no contest and was immediately arrested for his offenses. He's the first in a long line of men who will be arrested by the Long Beach Police Department over the next three days. Although it looked like he didn't put up a fight, apparently he was pretty aggressive on his way to police headquarters. This guy surely had an arrogant attitude and was too full of himself to realize that what he had done would be a stain on his life forever. Now, if you think I've missed any other physical interactions that should have made the list, well, that's only because I've gone over a whole lot more in some of my older videos. So don't forget to check out for some of the other craziest takedowns we've ever witnessed on the show. And if you ask me, the move that David K, the rabid rabbi, pulled on Chris right in the middle of the sting is the craziest physical interaction I've ever seen on the show. And of course, there's Thomas Bodnar's cracked up bleeding face. But can you think of more times when things totally spiraled out of control? Make sure to drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have any more crazy things to share, then make sure to join me on my channel's Discord server for free. And yeah, I've got an exclusive server for those of you who are interested. Now, before you leave, if you enjoyed my video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notification. Also, if you thought this video is crazy, then do check out this one right here. It's even better.